to the second Sunday of Advent here at Park Hill Christian Church. As we prepare once again for the coming of our Lord this Christmas, we're so thankful to have you join us on this wonderful journey. Our prayer is that your spirit will be fed as we worship Jesus Christ, our Savior. Get ready, people of God. The time of hope and peace is at hand. Open your hearts to God's word and God's will. Come, draw near to God in faith. Let us prepare our hearts to receive the wondrous gifts of God. When thinking about the Christ child whose birth we anticipate, he will one day sit at tables with strangers and friends, building relationships filled with love and grace. We see this as he fed the multitude, turned the water into wine, and as he ate with dear ones the night before his death. Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, light of the world, the word of life, no matter how we know him or what name we call him, he is our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love. May we be thankful for this and so much more as we prepare now for Holy Communion. Would you please pray with me? 
Our Heavenly Father, as we come to this communion, we, we pray that we may be delivered of our doubts and of our fears as we live in this world of turmoil. Thank you, Lord, for the peace of having your love and comfort and the blessing of your strength to support us when we need it the most. We ask your blessing on this bread and cup as we partake in remembrance of your son, Jesus, our Savior, who was born in a stable in Bethlehem and died on the cross for our sins and arose to walk in newness of life. Again, Lord, thank you for our many blessings. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Take, eat, and remember him. And the precious blood of Christ poured out for your sins. Take, drink, and remember him. And each Lord's day as you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we remember the Lord's death until he comes again. Amen.
coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me Lift it up, here we go As we prepare to go to God in prayer, gather your concerns, and we have many in this church. Let's go to God in prayer and lift them up. Let's bow our heads. Holy God, we bow our heads as we open our hearts to you. We're thankful that no matter how far we may feel we've turned away or wandered from your presence, you're still right here with us loving us, offering us your heart and longing to have ours. In this time of preparing for the celebration of Christmas, help us to keep our focus on you and your incredible gifts while we're caught up in the busyness of the season. Help us to keep Jesus at the center of all we do. Help us to make time to pray and spend time with you as we prepare for the holidays. In this Advent season, Lord, we watch, we wait, and we pray. We lift up those in our community of faith who are in need of prayer. We lift up to you all the concerns and all the needs of our hearts. For you, Lord, know what they are. Father, as your church, we really only seek two things, your will, and your way. Give us the wisdom to discern your will for our lives and help us grow the faith and trust we need to walk in the way of Jesus. And in this season of preparation and waiting, we listen for what you would speak to our hearts today. Break through once again, Lord. Watch over us as we wait in anticipation for the light of the world to come again, burst into our lives in the most amazing and unexpected ways this Christmas. As we prepare and as we wait, we pray together the prayer that Jesus gave to his followers saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today we light the candle for the second Sunday in Advent. This is a candle of peace. 
As we prepare for the oncoming of Jesus, we remember that Jesus is our hope and our peace. From the prophet of Isaiah, from a child has been born for us, a son has given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, grant that we may find peace as we prepare for our Lord's birth. May divisions in ourselves and in our families be peacefully resolved. May there be peace in our cities and in the countries of the world. Help us to see the paths of peace in our lives and then give us the courage to follow them. Lord, let us remember that you only are the giver of lasting peace and that you are always with us. Amen.
month of December has to be the craziest month of the year. But why is it so crazy? Well, it's partly because we're just plain busy. And to add to that busyness, we're preparing, right? When someone balances on a ladder, hanging lights on their home, in just the right spot, they're preparing. As we hit the stores, malls, and the internet with high levels of intensity and aggressiveness, we're preparing. As homes become filled with smells of the season, decorations are put up, and some radio stations change their programming to include songs about chestnuts and winter wonderlands, people are preparing because it will soon be Christmas. December is a month of preparation. In the church year, we're in the season of preparation called Advent. It's that time of year when we prepare for the arrival of Jesus once again. We prepare to celebrate his first arrival, his humble birth in Bethlehem. But we're also preparing for his second arrival, when we'll see him return in all his glory. If you would, join me now as I read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3. I'll be reading verses 1 through 6. Hear now the word of God. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, tetrarch of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Licinius, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, and rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. Just as we do all kinds of physical things to prepare for Christmas, we also do spiritual things to prepare ourselves for Christ. It's easy to prepare for Christmas and the holidays. I mean, just look at what others do, and you'll figure it out. But how do you prepare for Christ? What does that even look like? Well, there's someone who teaches us how to do that, John the Baptist. Now, he wasn't called that because he was the founder of the Baptist Church, actually far from it. There were no pews, no altar, no fancy clothes. And what did he talk about out there? Well, verse 3 tells us, He went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He was called the Baptist, or baptizer because he encouraged people to be baptized. He encouraged people to repent. Now, this wasn't necessarily his idea. This was his destiny. It's God's purpose for his life. John was talked about 700 years before he even lived. As it says in verse 4, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one calling in the wilderness Prepare the way for the Lord. John had been called by God to prepare people for the arrival of the Messiah. Jesus Christ was about to start his public ministry, and John was helping prepare people for this by calling them to repent of their sin. To repent means to make a U-turn, to change direction. John was telling the people to change the direction of their lives. They were heading away from God. John told them to turn their lives around and go back the other way, back to God. My friends, this is how you can prepare for Christ too. Repent. Think of repentance as a term of three R's. First, you realize. You identify what's sinful in your life. And this may take some quiet time on your part. Take a break from all the distractions around you and just sit, think, and identify the weaknesses in your life. What's your weakness? What's your sin? Are you materialistic? Do you like to be surrounded by things? Are you selfish? 
Do you have impure thoughts? Are you impatient? Do you think or say things about other people that you just really shouldn't? What are your sins? Identify them. This is the first part of repentance. Realize your sin. It's more than a bad habit. It's an offense against God. Choosing our will over the will of God in our lives. As you journey down this road, it's very possible that you feel a deep sense of remorse. It's more than regret, which might just be sorry for getting caught, or sorry for whatever consequences your sin has brought upon you. Remorse is to be truly sorry that you sinned against God, who made you and who blessed you, the God who loves you and saved you. You realize your sin and then admit that sinfulness. Confess it before God. That brings us to the second R of repentance. Rearrange. Have a change of heart. Let God's Spirit change you from within. Rearrange your thinking so that you see the error of your ways. Turn away from sin and turn back to the Lord. Isaiah spoke of hills being leveled, valleys being filled in, rough places being smoothed out. Pride is brought low. Humility increases. Rough edges of our speaking and abrasive parts of our personality are chiseled down. Instead of being materialistic, be spiritual. Instead of being selfish, be generous. Instead of being immoral, Strive to be pure in heart and in mind. Change direction in your life. Be rearranged. That's repentance. But I left out the most important of things. Without this, you'll never successfully change your life. Oh, you'll try and you'll have some success for a while possibly, but without the most important thing, you'll eventually fall back into your old ways. Do you know what the most important thing of repentance is? It's Christ. Without Jesus, true repentance is impossible and you'll never change. But with Christ, it can happen. After you realize your sins, take them to Christ. Take them to the foot of the cross. Confess your shortcomings to Him. And then rejoice because He forgives you of every single one. That's when you experience true Christian joy. Oh, by the way, that's also the final R word. Rejoice. Rejoice because Jesus forgives you. He brings joy and grace and strength. If you want to make changes in your life, Christ will give you the strength that you need. As it says in the fourth chapter of Philippians, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you want to stop being materialistic and instead be spiritual, Christ will give you the heart to do that. If you want to stop being selfish and instead be more generous, Christ will instill that in you. If you want to stop being immoral in your thoughts and instead be pure, Christ will help you. If you want to be more loving, more patient, more kind, then do this. Take your sins to Christ, confess them, and let Him forgive you. And as He forgives you, He'll make you into a brand new person. As Paul wrote, If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. That's repentance. That's what John the Baptist was talking about in that desert. He pointed people to Christ so that all mankind will see God's salvation. Jesus Christ is God's salvation. On Christmas Eve, the shepherds found him in the most unusual place. Not a palace, not a throne, but in a humble manger. And still today, if you want to see God's salvation, if you want to see the Christ, you'll find him in humble places. In the Bible, the humble word of God, there is God's salvation. 
in the humble act of baptism, Christ is there. At the Lord's Supper, in the humble bread and wine, you find God's salvation, the body and blood of Jesus, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. You'll also find His Spirit at work as God's people share His love, mercy, care, forgiveness, and joy. Are you ready for Christmas this year? More importantly, are you ready for Christ? Are you ready to celebrate His first coming? Are you ready to receive Him when He returns in all of His glory? If you listen closely over the songs about Rudolph and Frosty, you'll hear a voice, a voice calling in the desert, calling you in your desert. Prepare the way of the Lord. That's the message of Advent. Repent. Please listen to this poem. You can tell God you're sorry, ask him for forgiveness, but without true repentance, sin will still be your weakness. You can try to conquer sin, but it is impossible to do unless you have the Holy Spirit and his power helping you. You can beg and you can plead for your sins to be forgiven, but without turning from them, to sin you'll still be driven. You can try to stay away from all evil and wickedness, but without the light in your life, you'll still be drawn to darkness. You can cry, you can weep over your pestering sins, but without true remorse over sin, you'll never win. You can try to keep sin at bay, you can try to cut it out, but without true repentance, to sin, you will sell out. Folks, let Jesus take away your sins and change the direction of your life. Let him prepare you for the day that you see him, not in a Christmas card, not in a manger scene, but for the day that you'll see him truly face to face. And in the meantime, live in the peace of his salvation. Be comforted by his loving care, be inspired by his spirit, and be about the work that he's given you to do. Amen.
there is a candle in every soul some brightly burning some dark and cold there is a spirit that brings a fire ignites a candle and makes his home so carry your candle and run to the darkness seek out the hopeless the confused and torn hold out your candle for all to see it take your to see. 